Hello again, it is I, Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to this short video on the rules and regulations of landlords reports. But before we get into this video, please could you take some time to subscribe because it helps the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. I'm sure you're all aware now, it's Mondays and Wednesdays. Anyway, that's enough waffling, let's get on with it and let's get into this video on the rules and regulations of landlord reports. Let's have a look at the landlord's responsibilities first. So, number one, appliances provided by the landlord must be checked for safety at least, at least once a year. Now, a lot of um, tenancy agreements are six months now, but a landlord's report lasts 12 months. But when you've got change of tenants, the landlord should be at least having their integrity of the gas checked before the new tenant moves in because you don't want the old tenant leaving a dangerous situation. Number two, records must be kept for at least two years. So the landlord must keep his landlord's reports for two years plus the current one. So he must always have, or she must always have, at least three landlord's reports on record. Number three, records must be given to the tenant within 28 days of it being carried out. You go in, do a landlord's report, there are already tenants there. You have to issue the landlord's report to the landlord so he then can give it, or she, can give it to the tenants within 28 days. Uh, the checks must be carried out by a gas safe engineer with the relevant qualifications. So if you've got a cooker in a house, in a tenanted house, and you haven't got cookers on your gas safe, then you can't do a landlord's report. So only guys with all the qualifications should be doing landlord's reports. Number five, any existing records must be given to the tenant before moving in. So if you do have a tenancy agreement, it's only six months, then the relevant gas safe certificate from six months before should be issued before they move in. And also, it should be this gas safety check as well for the integrity of the gas. And then finally, if occupancy is less than 28 days, a copy of the current gas safety check must be displayed. And this also applies to HMOs. They should be displaying the gas safe certificate on the notice board with the relevant gas engineers information removed so the tenants can't mither the engineer if anything goes wrong because they mither the landlord. So that's the landlord's legislation and the landlord's responsibilities for carrying out gas safety checks. Now before we move on to the minimum checks a gas engineer needs to do on a landlord report let's just talk about carbon monoxide detectors or CO alarms in England and Wales, at the moment, it's not mandatory for private landlords to install carbon monoxide detectors. But I would advise you to, and there's no harm in having them done and checked by the gas engineer every year when he does a landlord report. Now in Scotland, it is mandatory for a private landlord to have carbon monoxide detectors installed. But in Northern Ireland, you do have to install a CO alarm if you have a new or a replacement combustion appliance. So that's CO alarms. Now let's have a look at the minimum checks the gas engineer needs to be doing. So number one, burner pressure and or gas rate or both. So if you can do burner pressure, you need to do it. And if you need to do the gas rate. Number two, operation of the safety devices. Testing thermoelectrics, uh, testing liquid vapours in cookers, all the safety devices. Number three, spillage test and flue flow testing. Any open fluid appliance, you'll need to do a flue flow test and a spillage test. Number four, again, any open fluid or flueless appliances that require ventilation, you need to check the ventilation. Number five, appliances securely installed and fixed. So you're checking that cookers are stable and boilers don't fall off the wall. Number six, the flue termination. Whether it's an open fluid appliance or whether it's a room sealed appliance, you need, still need to check the flue termination. Number seven, it's the flame pitcher or flue gas analyzing it. 
So if you can see the flame, you can do a flame picture, but if it's a zero governor or a flueless uh, space heater, you need to flue gas analyze it. Number eight. The condition of any case seals and the clearances around combustible material. Number nine. The condition of any cooker flexi hoses or whether a hob's got a hose fitted to it and that hose can be fitted to the hob and it's been installed correctly. Manufacturer's instructions are important whether a hob can be fitted with a flexible cooker hose or not. So you need to check the manufacturer's instructions. And then the last one, the actual condition of the appliance, whether the coals are in the right place for uh, insect life fuel effect fires, whether the radiants are broken, whether sight glasses are broken on open fluid boilers. So the actual condition of the appliance, whether there's any rust on it, whether any products of combustion could get into that room due to the hole in that appliance or flue system. So that's the minimum checks the gas engineer needs to do. Now, according to the regulations, according to regulation 26.9, you don't have to do a tightness test on a landlord's report, but the landlord has a responsibility to have its gas pipe checked and its integrity checked at least once a year. So that's why we incorporate a tightness test into a landlord's report. But technically these should be two completely separate entities and should be carried out separately. But for some reason we let landlords off and um, we do it all at the same time. So yes, you don't have to do a tightness test on a landlord report, but every year the landlord has to have his gas integrity checked. Now, why is this date important when we're doing the landlord report? Now, we've now got an MOT style way of checking our CP12s. CP12, that's what British Gas used to call their books CP12, so that's where that comes from. So it's a landlord report. So landlords can now, so from the 6th of April 2018, can now have their gas safety checks carried out up to two months early before the date of the next test without losing any time. So that's why this date's important. Other issues, what if you have a new appliance fitted in between the two landlord report dates. Now, according to the regulations, a new boiler has been installed. The new boiler doesn't have to have a landlord report for a further 12 months, but it's advisable to retest the appliance when all the others are due. So if you've got eight months left on a landlord report or 10 months or 11 months, then that boiler doesn't have to be checked then until the next one's due technically within 12 months so that's another thing appliances when they're brand new don't have to have landlord reports for the first 12 months now if the property becomes vacant uh, before the end of the landlord report and then it goes say six months where it's an empty property then when you come to do the next landlord report it will reset the clock but you have to issue that certificate to the landlord before he actually tenants it because it is an offence still to try and let out a property without a current landlord's report. So it would be out of date. So you would have to do that then before the tenant moves in. So these dates on these landlord's reports are really, really important. And seeing that last copy of the landlord report is also important for the gas engineer. So you can determine one, whether it's two months early, whether it's two months late, because because if the landlord's uh, report is two months late, then they've been letting out the property without a landlord's report, okay, which is an offence, remember. And also, if their property has been vacant, he would then have to prove that the property has been vacant. So, the dates are incredibly important. And finally, a landlord report is not a service. Every gas appliance requires to be serviced every 12 months and your landlord's report is just checking it's safe not stripping and cleaning so landlords should have their appliances serviced as well as a landlord's report but they can be incorporated at the same time but landlords don't have to keep any kind of service records for the appliances but if you find any defects when you're doing your landlord's report 
then they should kind of keep records of any defects that have been put right. And this is where landlords are getting away with it because they don't by law have to keep records of servicing. But gas appliances do require to be serviced every 12 months. And that is the end of this video on how to carry out a landlord's report. Now, if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to our channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because we're releasing videos mainly on Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.